It is a beautiful Friday afternoon here. And let me tell you, everybody, we got a lot of lacrosse to talk about today. Um, PLL is on a bye week this week, so as you can see, the standings are there. Um, kind of missed up a little bit there, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, PLL is going the way I thought it would go, which is, you know, kind of kind of going through the motions. But yeah, Jeff Teed is leading the league in points, 12 goals, 18 assists. Um, the whole New York Atlas squad has been on a tear with Connor Schellenberger into the fold. I mean, just an absolute unit for the New York Atlas. Really, that's the big story. That's one of the big stories anyway. Philadelphia 0-3 with no face-off, man. Bill Tierney coming back the coach and... Things have not worked out. You know, they've had some tough losses the Water Dogs have. And it's kind of crazy, especially when you have guys like Zach Tucci, you know, just lighting them up with three magnificent goals, including one to win the game in overtime against Philadelphia a couple weeks ago. And then, you know, he's been on a tear. You know, a lot of guys have been on a tear on faceoffs due to how bad the faceoffs have gotten this year. Um, you know, the whole 32-second, 52-second shot clock debate has really been a thing that has just been, you know, up in arms on people's heads. And for me personally, it, it should go back to 52. Um, it, it should stay at 52. Like, I know, you know, there's the whole PLL State of League type things that have been out and about the past couple of days and stuff like that. And yada, 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 and all this, you know, PLL trying to hype themselves up and everything like that when they – you know, you know, kind of doing a little bit better attendance wise, but not really kind of doing a little bit better, you know, as far as people watching the game goes. But that's mostly you get the anger of WBA fans and softball fans wanting the games off TV. I don't understand. You're y'all aren't big either. Please stop. Like, we're just happy to be on TV. You know, we're just happy to have field lacrosse on TV, you know, everything like that. We're just happy to have it on TV when, you know, back in the day. And, you know, I was telling somebody this the other day, you know, hey, this isn't the days where we were stuck on CBS Sports Network and, and, and ESPNU on tape delay at like 10 o'clock at night. No, we have our games live. There's at least one game a week now on TV. You know, I, I, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, could there be more? Absolutely. You know, like the NBC days where we'd have half our games on TV. You, yeah, I, I definitely love that, but it's that's just not the way the things are going to come, you know, for the PLL like that. So we'll wait and we'll see. We will wait and we will see. Um, uh, one big thing that has come out over the past couple of days is the OLA and the OJLL, you know, have the whole, you know, direct release rule that, that you know, that Toronto apparently violated the Toronto beaches who have – the 100-point score Will Firth on their team, who has 51 goals, 49 assists so far in 13 games. My God, he's one on tear. That whole Beaches team has been on a tear. Best team in Canada right now. You know, can, can, can you really blame them? I don't care if they've had the forfeit eight games as a result of violating that rule, which Toronto's going to, you know, obviously counter and say, hey, we uh, – we don't know what you're talking about here. We're going to fight for our eight games back that we won. You know, you know, the games are already won fair and square. So the fact that the OLA and the OJL, you know, didn't do something about this at, way before then, you know, just kind of speaks volumes to how badly run the OLA has been. And it's been this way for years now, um, you know, and I've talked about it on and off for the past couple of years. I've had, you know, some of the stories that have come out about the LLA and the LJLL, you know, ha having these type of organizational issues. Hell, we even had um, the junior beating uh, Napon Knights, you know, get denied for moving up. You know, that was not even a couple months ago, barely even a couple months ago that they got denied for moving up because, you know, they just said nobody really wanted them for some reason. Well, there was two teams that didn't want them for some reason. So, yeah, there's that. There's also Joey Spelina. He's also lighting it up for Orangeville. The Northmen, you know, have been doing pretty good so far. I, I'm not going to put the OLA standings and stuff like that 
I don't have a lot of room. I don't have a lot of room in the ticker. So, uh, yeah, as you can see right now, you see the um, you see the standings for the WLA. Really, not much to talk about there um, because there just has nothing to talk about. Will Malcolm is leading points though. So, good old boy from Panther City has forty three points. Um, on the other side of things, of course, you know, major series lacrosse, my boys, Six Nations with with the Stotts brothers, with Lyle and everybody else, you know, are still unbeaten right now. They even pitched a shutout the other day, eight to nothing. Um, I believe it was against um, Brampton. I think it was. It was. It was. I think it was Brampton that they pitched a shutout against the other day. I don't know. I haven't really been keeping up with too many of the games, you know, from the USL because they, you know, don't put the games on live stream. They'll put the games up, but it's like way after, you know, the game's already over. So it's kind of a pointless watch at that point. But I'll try my best to watch some of the stuff, you know, from the MSL. Hopefully, hopefully the Man Cup streams on the MSL's YouTube page this year. That would be very nice. That would be very, very nice. Yeah, as you can see, um, 12 points for Brooklyn right now. Again, it's by points. So uh, there was a tie game. Six Nations and Oakville had a tie game. There was like an injury that happened in one of these games earlier in the season. And, um, yeah, it was kind of rough. Well, it actually, it wasn't even early in the season. It was just a couple, you know, like a couple days ago that it happened. And I forgot which game it was. Tanner Cook is leading – um, points right now. I believe that's uh, he plays for Brooklyn. He's got 27 points that leads the league right now. 13 goals, 14 assists. Um, again, in the WLA, Victoria is leading the league right now. Still unbeaten. Everybody else is trying to catch up. Long season to go in the WLA because the WLA season is a lot longer. You know, a lot more games than the MSLs is. So, yeah, um, I know there's been some, you know, there's been some stuff with Hello, you know, you know that has been kind of, you know, kind of rough to look at, you know, like again, face off has been, you know, really rough to look at. The whole 32, 52 second shot clock debate has been kind of rough, you know, and again, like I said, my stance is just keep the shot clock at 52 seconds. Um, replay, replay has also been a hot topic. Um, and officiating as well, you know, I get Maddie Palom and company have been doing, you know, their best. But their best isn't what we want. It, it hasn't been very good officiating this year so far at all. And, you know, some of the games have been very much impacted by the officiating. You know, the California Redwoods might want to have a, have a really bad bone to pick with the officials. At least one game anyway. But officiating has not been up so far this year at all, and it needs to be a little bit better. That's just that's just saying facts. It needs to be a little bit better. But we'll find out as we keep going on through the season. Um, again, I don't really have much to say about the WLA, the MSL right now. I don't have anything to say about the other junior lacrosse leagues on everything to say about the Rocky Mountain or BC. You know, I don't really have anything to say about those two at all because, again, the JLL, OLA stuff kind of dominated the highlights, you know, for this video and everything like that. It's so really that was the crux of what I want to talk about, which, I mean, you just can't you just can't say, oh, well, we're going to forfeit eight games. You know, you violated this rule. You have too many of these specific players, you know, and yada, yada, yada on your team, you know, because there's rules and limits and stuff like that to how many, how many certain guys you got to have on one team, stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it's a whole lot of legal mumbo jumbo that I don't really want to get into. And I mean, we could find the statement, read that all over again, but I don't really want to. It's a stupid rule. It's a stupid thing because the games already happened. It's kind of like taking away Reggie Bush's Heisman. It, it already happened. Like, who cares if Reggie Bush got paid this such and such? He, he won the Heisman. He, he played the games. He won the Heisman. Why are we taking away games? It's kind of like a recruiting violation, too. You know, like the death penalty. Oh, well, the game. Oh, well, SMU, you know, did this and that 
that pay players this and that much, but the game's already happened though. It doesn't really matter at this point. Like, why are we doing, why are we punishing, you know, guys now for no reason for stuff that's already happened when you could have, you know, got the stuff out the way in the first place that nobody would have to be punished for no reason. Cause I mean, this is stupid, but whatever, that's just me. See, so, yeah, I'm going to get on about it here and I'm going to see you all, you know, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Um, if the Stanley cup final ends tonight, if it ends tonight, then, Oh my God. Oh my God. But if it ends on Monday, Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness gracious! I'm going to be uh, going to be a completely different person if this goes to seven games. So that'll do it for me. Y'all take care, and I'll see you soon.